Hi, Shane McClay here, curator of Battleship USS Alabama in Mobile Bay, Alabama. Today, we're visiting some friends here in uh, New Jersey at our one of our sister ships, the USS New Jersey. And with me, we have my counterpart, curator Ryan Zemanski, who's going to be with us today, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about the compartment we're currently standing in, which is the fire control room of Battleship New Jersey. And Ryan, I guess I'll just let you take it from here and tell everybody a little bit about what we're looking at and the purpose of this equipment and this room. And so this is forward plot on the Battleship New Jersey, and uh, I believe we have the only working Mark 8 branch keeper in the world. You apply power to it with this switch right here. Originally it was one of these brass uh, snap switches, but tour guides kept leaving it on, and of course we don't want a Great Depression era electromechanical analog computer running continuously, so we replaced it with a little egg timer so that after a minute or so it'll shut off. From there, come from the back of the machine, and it's got a three position switch. Here is off. This turns it on, but without electrical power, so that you can operate it from the hand crank here. And Ryan, can you explain to everybody a little bit about what they're looking at, what these various dials might have done, and what their purpose was as far as uh, the, the fire control of the ship? This, this is what, a 16-inch gun? Yes. And so we have a range finder on top of the superstructure that finds the range to an enemy target, uh, and it more or less finds the bearing to that target as it is. However, our guns, 16-inch 50 caliber guns, have a range of 23 miles, and it takes the projectile 88 seconds to get to that range, so the target has moved. This computer takes something like 19 different points of data, uh, some of it is input automatically, like this ship's own speed just automatically feeds into this. Some of it is accounted for automatically, for example, the Coriolis effect. The enemy ship moves as the surface of the Earth rotates while the projectile's in the air. This accounts for that, and some of it, we're guessing, I think the enemy ship's speed is five knots. That's what it looks like it's going. So I can change this dial the five knots, and now the computer is plotting a solution. Well, I think their bearing's a little bit different. So we can change the target bearing. Again, this is creating a solution that then goes up to the guns, and the trainers and pointers up there can match it. Most people uh, during World War II, the fire control systems were a one and done thing. You are plotting for, at this point in time, this shot. This one is a range keeper. It's state of the art in the uh, 1930s because it keeps the solution and it continues to solve the fire control problem over time. So as long as the variables don't change, this is still plotting even though the enemy ship is still moving. Uh, as we see them change speed, for example, we hit them and their speed reduces, but then we have to modify what's going into the computer. And something else a lot of people, it's kind of a misconception, Ryan, that People assume that the large guns on a battleship, in our case 16-inch guns, in your case 16-inch 50, in our case 16-inch 45s, are loaded, of course they're loaded in the breech of the gun, and then they're fired, but they're not fired from the turret, are they? They could be. I mean, there, there's a redundant way to fire them from there, but normally they're fired remotely from this room, is that correct? Correct. Hey, could you show us the trigger mechanism? Sure thing. So, we, we got a solution here, I step on this foot pedal, it lights up a light, this display. So you come over here and you got your triggers. Uh, this trigger is actually in the wrong place. It should be in the middle here. It's got that pineapple grip. But this is your alarm. You pull it three times and it warns that we're going to fire. This is to fire using the gyroscope here. So that as the ship's rocking and rolling, you close the firing circuit, nothing happens until the ship rolls back to zero. Well, let's say we're really close to our target. We, we don't need to wait for uh, this. I can just pull the automatic firing key.
in the 1980s, they were still using World War II era powder. They were worried that the powder wasn't good, so there's a tiny radar mounted on top of each gun turret, and it feeds the velocity of the projectile leaving the barrel into this uh, printer here. So if we start to see numbers less than 2,400 feet per second, it means it is bad powder, and that shell isn't going to go 23 miles. And these were really sophisticated for their time. For example, these trigger mechanisms, when you pull the trigger, it didn't necessarily mean that the, the gun was going to fire. They were so sophisticated, it, it's just not correct. It, it waited until the ship had leveled itself and gave you a correct firing solution. Exactly. So the chances are your shot was on target more often than not. And also, the guidance of these systems, could you explain to us a little bit how these were not guided necessarily optically, but from radar? on top of the ship to assist so that the ship could actually fire accurately, not during the daytime, but also during nighttime. But you didn't necessarily have a visual uh, uh, targeting on your uh, on the enemy warship. So tell us how that might work. So uh, these ships have a Mark 38 director, and that director has a radar on top of it that's super high frequency, relatively short range. It only reaches out to about 25 miles. It feeds into a repeater down here. And this isn't like the radar you think of, like this one right here where you've got an arm sweeping. This is more like an EKG. It shows you a blip at the range to the target. So it's basically just showing you a one-dimensional, this is the range to the target. You know the bearing to the target because you've pointed your rangefinder and radar at it. Uh, and the rest, the Mark 8 does. Well, thank you, Ron. We really appreciate that. Very uh, informative. I'd also like to point out if you'd like to see other videos of some of the things we're doing at USS Alabama, you can find us on the internet at www.ussalabama.com. And Ryan, if they'd like to check out some of your many videos that you guys have here in Battleship New Jersey, where can they go? Go to youtube.com backslash Battleship New Jersey for over 300 videos about operating an Iowa class battleship. Fantastic. Ron, you've been a great host. We really appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Take care.